Have you ever wondered what some of your favorite 90s bands are up to these days? How about where they're currently living? I know I have, and one of the ones I'm most curious about is definitely the guys in the Backstreet Boys. So today we'll dive into the places where each member calls home. Easily one of the most infamous American pop groups in music history, the Backstreet Boys have been a mainstay in our lives since the early 90s. First formed in Orlando, Florida, band members AJ McLean, Howie Duro, Nick Carter, Kevin Richardson, and Brian Littrell began by touring malls, parties, high schools, and colleges before signing their first record deal. In 1997, the Backstreet Boys would go on to become one of the biggest bands in all of the world. In fact, their total domination of the pop charts over the next few years would put them on the path to earning a combined net worth of around $200 million. All that money must mean that the Backstreet Boys secured themselves some killer mansions, right? Of course. But let's be honest, some of them have made out better than others. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer, and in this special house tour, we're going to look at the homes of each member of the Backstreet Boys because I know you're all wondering. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. As a child, AJ McLean suffered from a speech impediment, which only makes it all the more impressive that he would one day become a member of the most popular boy band of all time. After overcoming this early difficulty and earning himself a personal net worth of around $30 million, AJ picked up this LA home in 2015 for a reported $1.9 million. The exterior consists of a gated entrance with stone pillars, a turret, and stacked stone exterior wall. Combine that with the home's box two floor design and this place is definitely giving me real castle vibe. On the inside, the entry's tiled floor is embellished with a stunning compass rose inlay and the double height foyer also boasts a second floor gallery. Meanwhile, a staircase on the far side leads steeply up to the second floor which adds a little taste of Spanish style, especially with the colorful tile and wood treads. Throughout the majority of the home, the interiors mostly all offer some combo of dark, distressed floors alongside all white with black satin trim. As for the kitchen, it's decidedly more country style than the rest of home, but it still has everything you could possibly need. Upstairs, there are five bedrooms and five and a half baths, as well as the primary suite that boasts a grand stone fireplace and a retractable glass wall that opens to reveal a private balcony. Backyard isn't massive, but it has the mandatory LA pool and spa combo, as well as some stacked stone accents, tropical landscaping, and a covered patio with an outdoor fireplace. However, AJ would list this home in 2018 asking for a cool $2.5 million, but it's unclear if he's ever been able to move off the property. Of course, even if he hasn't, with a home this nice, I doubt he's complaining all that much. Alright, next, let's check out the home of Howie D. The solo career that Howie Duro launched around 2011 might not have succeeded, but that's alright because he somehow managed to reinvent himself as a real estate developer in the end. That being said, Let's take a look at his gorgeous penthouse apartment. After earning the vast amount of his fortune thanks to his membership in the Backstreet Boys, Howie D bought his longtime Florida residence back in 2000 for a ported $410,000. Seriously, that's all he had to spend on it. But don't worry, he'd make some vast improvements over the years. In fact, Howie liked this place so much that when it was finally completed, he showed the entire thing off to MTV Cribs. Boasting 2,819 square feet of space, his penthouse contains four bedrooms, three baths, along with beach and ocean. Interiors boast an open plan living area with banks of glass that open up to the unit's wraparound balcony and some unique custom-made cabinet. Other standout spaces include a kitchen pantry that's accessed through butler doors and a master suite with a sitting room, a gas fireplace, and a massive soaking tub. This home was actually decorated by Howie's brother, who just so happens to be an interior designer. In fact, it was his idea to include those massive fish tanks and those grand two-way glass fireplaces. Speaking of those fish tanks, Howie's billiards room is about as classy as it comes, and it's where he's chosen to hang a large portion of his many platinum records 
awards and other accomplishments. The layout also includes enough room for a formal dining room, a family area, and an open kitchen with a range of stainless steel appliances, a breakfast bar, and a center island. After making all of his money with the Backstreet Boys, Howie would then team up with his design-inclined brother, to own and operate what's known as Duro Brothers Develop. After making all of his money with the Backstreet Boys, Howie would then team up with his design-inclined brother to own and operate what's known as Duro Brothers Development and Consulting. Rumor has it that they're in the middle of developing a $35 million condo complex in nearby Cocoa Beach. Maybe that's where Howie moved to next since he sold this original penthouse last year for a reported $1.5 million. For those of you keeping track at home, that's a million more than he originally paid for it. Next up is everyone's favorite Backstreet Boy, Nick Carter. Nick was the first member of the Backstreet Boys to strike out on his own. After everyone else got tired of their representation, Nick stuck around with their management and he launched a rather unsuccessful solo career. Fortunately, he had a lot more luck in the real estate game. Nestled into the gated equestrian enclave of LA's Hidden Hills, Nick picked up this traditional 5,000 square foot home in 2013. First built in 1956, Nick would invest a considerable amount of time and money in fixing this place up. During this remodel, Nick would have hardwood floors installed throughout, vaulted ceilings, a few balconies, a bunch of oversized windows, and even some sliding glass doors. The kitchen offers upgraded amenities like marble countertops and stainless steel appliances, and upstairs you'll find five beds and 6.5 baths. In Nick's master bedroom, the main selling point is most definitely the massive walk-in closet, but the space also boasts some recessed ceilings and views of the countryside and valley. Check out from either the bedroom or the ensuite. Common areas also include a games room with built-in aquarium and an oversized living room. Moving outside, there's about an acre of land with a free-form pool and spa combo, not to mention a sleigh patio and even a chicken coop. Elsewhere on the grounds, there's also a guest house nestled onto the Southern California hilltop. After spending three years living here, Nick would list his home in 2016 and wind up walking away with $4.1 million. I'm kind of curious as to where he went next, but he's kept that info mostly on the down low. I can tell you this much though, it wasn't his buddy Kevin's place. As a child, Kevin Richardson grew up on a 10 acre farm in Kentucky. But as a grown man with a successful music career, he wound up in a classic family home located in Los Angeles, California. Property records suggest that Kevin first bought his home in 2001 for a reported $2 million. Originally constructed in 1936, the residence sits at the end of a long gated driveway with a two car garage and a front door set into the side of the house. Once inside this 3,532 square foot, two story home, guests are greeted by a living room complete with a brick fireplace and low beamed ceiling. Not far from there is the dining room with a similar aesthetic, but painted a shade of red that really pops. Country style kitchen has beam ceilings and dark wood cabinets and there's a nearby spacious family room that opens through French doors to a covered terrace surrounded by a low brick wall. On the upper level of Kevin's crib, there are four beds and 4.5 baths, including his master suite with vaulted ceilings, a private deck, and a large attached bath with double sinks, a shower, and a soaking tub. A second covered patio near the front of the house features a crisscross sign, as well as a built-in fireplace and barbecue pit. Apparently, Kevin would use this space as something of an outdoor dining room, as it also includes a farm table lit under a chandelier surrounded by wooden chairs. Finally, there's a swimming pool, a short walk down the lawn, and a space to sunbathe with some city views. After living here for close to a decade, Kevin would sell this home for nearly $3.9 million, making a nice profit. All right, last but certainly not least, I'm gonna take you inside the unbelievable home of Brian Littrell. Day Brian Littrell might be well known for his Christian music stylings, but I'll tell you what he should really be known for, his epic Atlanta mansion. According to Brian, he and his wife Leanne fell in love at first sight with this place only a few months before tying the knot over 20 years ago. The couple then moved into what was a 5,600 square foot residence after being roped in by the home's timeless feel and glamorous decor. Lucky Lucky for them, Leanne says that when they bought the home, the previous owners left behind a whole bunch of the amazing art and antiques too. Since moving in, this Backstreet Boy has more than doubled the square footage of his crib. 
bringing the mansion up to a whopping 18,000 square feet of space. He and his wife also added their own personal touches throughout. This included redoing the kitchen, including adding a massive chandelier and a pretty tasty looking pizza oven. In fact, the couple even added on an entire wing to the house just for their son, as well as something they call the playhouse, a games or entertainment room for the grown-ups. Further amenities Brian added to his mansion include a pool house and an indoor basketball court featuring original flooring from Kentucky's Rupp Arena. With nine bedrooms and a dozen bathrooms, there's absolutely no shortage of space anywhere in this massive abode. As for Brian's favorite spot in the house, well, no surprise here, it's his recording studio where he not only records all of his music, but jams out with his son on a regular basis. The only problem? Turns out Brian's neighbors are really not a fan of him, his family, or his house. How come? Well, Brian occasionally likes to rent this property out to be used as a venue for celebrations. And whenever that happens, it can get pretty loud. All right, that's gonna bring this special Backstreet Boys house tour to a close. Be sure to let me know what you thought of the homes of all five members in the comments down below. Whose spot was your favorite? Was it Brian's mega mansion or one of the other less massive homes? I for one was a fan of AJ. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.